Well, good evening. I'd like to have you turn to page 43 in your red hymnal. Page 43. Jesus is my Savior. I shall not be moved. In his love and favor, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. In my Christ abiding, I shall not be moved. In his love I'm hiding, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. If I trust him ever, I shall not be moved. He will fail me never, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. I'm last now. On his word I'm feeding, I shall not be moved. He's the one that's leading, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Vern Bunyan, will you ask the Lord to bless our service tonight, please? Okay, now turn to page 213 in your red hymnal. Page 213. I have heard of a land on a faraway strand. Here's a beautiful home of the soul. Built by Jesus on high. There we never shall die, tis a land where we never grow, never grow, never grow, in a land where we'll never grow, never grow. That beautiful home where we'll never more roam, we shall be in the sweet by and by. Happy praise to the King through eternity, sing. Tis a land where we never shall die. Amen, amen. Never go. In a land where we'll never roam, never go, never go. In a land where we'll never grow. When our work here is done and the life crown is won, 
and her troubles and trials are o'er. All our sorrow will end, and our voices will blend with the loved ones who've gone on before. Sing it out now. Come on. Never go home, never go home, in a land where we'll never go home. Never go home, never go home, in a land where we'll never go home. Amen, amen. Look at me now, turn to page 196 in your red hymnal. Page 196. Never grow old. Amen. <clears throat> Down in the valley with my Savior I would go, where the flowers are blooming and the sweet waters flow. Everywhere he leads me I would follow, follow on, walking in his footsteps till a crown be won. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I would follow on. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Everywhere he leads me, I would follow on. Down in the valley with my Savior I would go, where the storms are sweeping and the dark waters flow. With his hand to lead me, I will never, never fear. Danger can't affright me if my Lord is near. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I would follow on. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Everywhere he leads me, I would follow on. Down in the valley or upon the mountain steep, close beside my Savior would my soul ever keep. He will lead me safely in the path that he has trod, up to where they gather on the hills of God. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I would follow on. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Everywhere he leads me, I would follow on. All right, uh, camp will begin tomorrow uh, at uh, 7.30, so uh, be here on time at 7.30, and we'll head out and uh, be ready all through camp. So be praying for us now as we're off to junior camp uh, this week, and we'll be preaching Friday on the street corner. Amen. We won't have a Wednesday night service, so I'll give you a break. And <laughs> We won't won't have a Wednesday night service. All right. Uh, any other any other thing? Anything else? Anybody uh, have a word of testimony? I'd like to stand up and give a word of testimony. Anybody? Some blessing the Lord's given you. Anybody? Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got a real blessing. I'm glad that Brother Nick Serino came uh, as a missionary. And, uh, it was a blessing seeing a man up there, married, got eight kids, being up there where there's nothing for a year. And Brother Sam here, it was a real blessing him come. And I enjoyed the message this morning. Uh, and also, it was good to see my folks come and uh, it's good to see the Mitchells here in Florida, too. So Amen. it's been good to have some good fellowship. Amen. Amen. All right. I enjoyed uh, playing a game of golf with uh, Brother Mitchell yesterday. <laughs> he beat me, he slaughtered me, <laughs> but I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I had a good time out there. Had some fellowship with him talking with him, just talking back and forth. And, uh, you know, when somebody's saved and born again, I haven't seen Brother Mitchell for 20 years, uh, but it's just like I've seen him every day for 20 years. Amen? Brother Mitchell, amen? amen. Uh, it seemed like I've just seen him every day for 20 years. We had fellowship and close, sweet fellowship together. <laughs> I, I got saved on the island of Bellum, Bellum, 1943, and during the South, South Pacific campaign. And I had a test, I had a test right after that, and I got an on the throne, and I'm the only one who got out without being shot, dead, or wounded. I thank God, because I prayed during that time, all the crap down in there with those, those machine gun bullets flying around in there. I asked God to protect me, and He did. Many times later, uh, in my, in my services, uh, 
Uh, Brother Mitchell, I wish you could stay about five, six, seven weeks. <laughs> uh, I really do. I really do. I wish you could stay about five or six weeks. Some of you sat under Dr. Ruckman's preaching for 20 years has got to get something. <laughs> Amen? And I've just, I've caught about 50 things already. He just said them nonchalant like, you know, uh, here and there. And uh, I, I've picked them up and wrote them down. And I'd be doing you like I've done Brother Pete. I'd start writing down all those little things and picking them up. I wish you could stay about five or six weeks. I know you can't. I know you got to go on down the road. And uh, may not see you again until the Lord comes. But uh, thank you for being faithful. And I love you in the Lord. All right, let's all stand, take up an offering tonight, give an opportunity to give. Uh, he said he loves a cheerful giver, and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray you bless this offering tonight, uh, bless your people as they give, and uh, Lord, encourage them uh, to be faithful in you, doing what you want them to do, and Father, help us to uh, be dependable. Lord, I know we're, on, we're not, Father, and I know we can fall uh, to the wee side at any time, at any moment, and Lord, you're the one that has kept us faithful down through the years, and Lord, without you, there wouldn't have been any faithfulness in any of us, and Lord, I know that, and I keep looking to you and trusting upon you and, and depending upon you, Father, to get the job done, and Lord, I pray you'd bless your people as you give now. And, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to get the blessing you want us to have. And, Lord, help us to apply it to our lives and to our hearts, Father. Now, bless your word, bless this offering, and bless our service tonight. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen. you like to sing this evening? Oh, Brother Phil? The King and the Beggar. The King and the Beggar. Let me go get the guitar. Yeah. 
brought my soul with his own blood, gave to me a peace this world could afford. Redeeming love, a love that knows no limit. Redeeming love, a love tonight and turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Now here's my text. I'm going to preach on uh, let us play the man. Let us play the man. And uh, it's a design for a Christian being like a man. Being like a man and ladies being like a man. Now you say that's weird. No, that's biblical. <laughs> that's biblical. Now take your Bible and turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and here's my text. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13. Verse 13. Turn to the verse, and let's read it, and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13 says, Watch ye that stand fast in the faith. Now here's the part I want to preach on. Quit ye like men, be strong. Quit ye like men, be strong. Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray this evening that you'll uh, wash my mind in the blood of Jesus Christ, wash my heart, and Lord, please fill me with the Holy Spirit, and Lord, may it be an encouragement and a strengthen to your people to uh, be faithful and busy doing what you want them to do when the trumpet sounds. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for his sake, amen. Now, I want you to look at the text here in verse 13. I want you to underline the word Q-U-I-T. Quit ye like men. Now, who's he talking to? He talking about say people. He talking about the Christian. And he says, he says to them, he says, be like what? Quick ye like what? Be like what? Like men. Like men. Then he's saying, oh, be like a man. Be like a man. And, and something about him. And then it goes on to the passage in the same verse. It says, be strong. Be strong. And he's talking about the Christian himself. He's talking about ladies. He's talking about women. He's talking about the Christian. In the Christian attitude, he's saying, now I'm going to tell you to be like a man, some things about him that's not like a woman, <clears throat> not like a lady. Now, nothing against you, ladies, but not like a lady, but like a man. Be strong. All right, now take your Bible again and turn to 1 Timothy. And turn to first, uh, 2 Timothy. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and look at verse 3. Again here, he takes a man and likens a Christian unto a man. Be like a man, be a man. All right, Second, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, who's he talking about? He's talking about the Christian. Amen? Talking about the Christian. And he says, endure hardness like a good soldier of Jesus Christ in an aspect, then be like a man, act like a man, be like a man. Be that in estimation as a child of God like a man is. And uh, I was reading a story the other day in, in a newspaper. And the story was um, uh, about the, the dog race up in Alaska. This winter they had a dog race in Alaska. And it's called the Diderod dog race. And for years, for several years now, a woman has won, won that dog race. A woman has won it. I mean, she's come in first place. And all every man in Alaska, you know what it does to them? It just grits them. That a woman's rung that... I mean, Alaska, man, you've got dogs all over Alaska, and it's that go, 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 and then men are just kind of in... Mm, a woman won it. A woman won it. A woman won it. 
And I mean, this year, they, uh, they got in that race again, and here's that same woman again, and she's running. And everybody knows that that woman's out to win. The Ditterog, Ditterog, uh dog race. You know what you get if you win that race? You get three brand new automobiles if you win it. And over $300,000 cash if you win the race. Brand new automobiles. And she's out to win, boy, but so is all the other fellas. And I start out and go, and this one guy, this one guy heads out, and he says, I got one person to beat. I know I can beat everybody else. But that woman there, if I beat her, I'm not going to have to go to beat her. And they head out, and they go, and they're going in the middle of that race, and it's nick and tuck, nick and tuck, and nick and tuck, and nick and tuck, and back and forth, and he's ahead of her. And he gets lost in a storm. And he gets lost in the storm, and he's off the trail. And she comes along, and she finds him, and she sees him, and she gets him, and brings him back on the trail, and the storm just blacks out everything, blacks the whole thing out. And she, she says, we can't go on. He says, well, we can't go on. And there's a cabin back about 26 miles back on that Diderot dog race. And so they agree to go back. And he heads back and she heads back. Because they can't go on. And the dogs can't. The dogs are lost. The dogs can't go on. The dogs can't see where they're going. And so she takes off and she gets a little ways ahead of him. And, she, and he's right behind her going back to the cabin. And it got to stay the storm out to the cabin. And then he gets this bright idea. And he says, it's, I, I can't beat that woman. But if she keep, goes back, and I turn around and go to the, to the finish line, I might stand a chance. But he says, I can, my dogs can't see. And I can't see. So he stops his dogs and gets out and goes and gets the lead dog and takes that lead dog and turns that lead dog around and heads for the finish line and he's walking in a blind snowstorm going across him like that and he's walking strictly by faith in a blind snowstorm and she says I got to get back to this cabin to live and she goes back to the cabin and he's headed for the finish line and he walks out of the storm and says if I go I might make it and he goes and he wins the race you know, what was the difference the difference was a point right there where fun fella says, I'll take a chance. I can't quit. I got too much at stake. And she says, I got to go back. There's a difference. There's a place right there where that woman says, I got to go back. It's safe. And he says, it ain't safe, but I'm gone. And you know something? He wants you to be like a man. It may not be safe. It may not be safe, but don't you quit. You keep going. See the difference? He beat her. He'd have never beat that woman. He said, I'd have never beat her if I wouldn't have taken a chance and went. I'd have never won the race. But he did. What did he do? He kept going. He kept going. Now, I want you to get some men. I want you to get some men now. Take your Bible out. You say, well, he beat her. He may, he not, not, may not beat her next time. Amen? Come on, folks. He may not beat her next time. Right? May not be a storm there. Come on, that woman's good. You won that race five years in a row, you do pretty good. You win it five years in a row, you got to get up and go win it five years in a row. Amen? She may, make, may win it the next five years, who knows? Come on, folks. Now stay with me. I want you to take your Bible, and I want you to turn to 1 Samuel chapter 4 now. Stay with me. Don't give up on me now, brother. <laughs> uh, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 4. 1 Samuel chapter 4, I can see the eye, look in your eye, you're thinking, oh no, preacher. <laughs> now come on, stay with me. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 4, and look at verse 9. 1 Samuel chapter 4, and look at verse 9. And here it is again. 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 9 says, Be strong, be strong, and quick ye like men, ye Philistines. You know what that is? That's a Philistine man. And he says to his army, he says, Be strong and quick yourselves like what? Like men. 
You know what he's telling his men? He says, you get ready because you're fixing on dying. And if you don't get to the place where you get ready to go and almost die, you're liable to be a slave. And he says, make yourself like men and let's go. So they get ready and they head out and they're fixing on dying. All right, now again, take your Bible and turn to uh, 2 Samuel again. Turn to 2 Samuel chapter 10. I'm going to preach on uh, let us play the man. Let us play the man. Do you know what they have in this country? They have what they call the marathon in America. They have what they call a marathon. And you know what the marathon race is? It's a 26-mile race. It's a 26-mile race in the marathon. You know what that is? That's a get up and that's run for 26 miles and crossing the finish line. You know who run the, you know who runs the marathon? Men run the marathon. Do you know how many women run the marathon? You know why? They won't let women run the marathon. They won't let women run the marathon. You know why? Because they, they, the, the women run the marathon in the Olympics, and when they run the marathon in the Olympics, they're, they're, when they cross the finish line, the women just about passed out when they cross the finish line, when they run the marathon in the Olympics. So they said they will not run the marathon in the Olympics again, and they haven't run it for years, the marathon. You, we, you say, what for? Because there's something about when a man, a man has the strength to go on. And you say, well, you're saying women don't have strength. No, I ain't saying that. I know some women that got more brains than men. Come on. I, uh, ladies, come on. I got, I know some women. You say women ain't strong. Some women uh, are a lot stronger than some men I know. But there's a thing right there. When the Lord says, quick ye like men, do you think the Lord didn't say that for no reason at all? You think God didn't say that for a reason? He wants a Christian. He said, quick ye like men. What for? He wants some element in you to be in estimation, to be like a man, and God's, if God points him out to him. Now look at the next verse. Look at 2 Samuel. Turn to the verse. Turn to 2 Samuel chapter 10. 2 Samuel chapter 10, and here it is again. When the Lord says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, says, uh, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, the Lord knows what He's talking about when He says it. Amen? He didn't say that accidentally. God didn't just accidentally say, uh, be ye good soldiers. Be ye, endure hardness as a good soldier. He didn't say that accidentally. He said it on purpose. For an absolute reason, he wants a Christian to be like a soldier. See? He wants that element in you. All right. Uh, turn to 2 Samuel chapter 10 now. And uh, look at verse 12. 2 Samuel chapter 10. And look at verse 12. Here it is again. Be of good courage. And let us play the man for our people. And for our city and for our God. And the Lord do that which seemeth him good. Now who is talking there? Joab is talking there and they're getting ready to go into a battle and die and fight in a war. And he says in the passage, now underline it, and he says, let us play the man. Let us play the man. What for? He says a man, what for? Let's be the man and go out there and what? And die and get killed for the Lord. I don't preach on tonight. Play the man. Play the man. And I'm talking to women. Play the man. Now, I'm not talking about a, a, a moral thing. Amen. I'm talking about a spiritual thing in being a man. All right? Number one. Take your Bible and turn to, uh, turn to uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23. Here we go again. Turn to 2 Samuel chapter 23. Now, turn to the passage. Turn to 2 Samuel. Turn to 2 Samuel chapter 23, and I want you to pick up verse 8. 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 8. Now these be the names of the mighty men of David. Now these be the names of the mighty men of David. 
Now who is David a type of in the Bible? Jesus Christ. David is a type of Jesus Christ in the Bible. And he said these, now underline it, the mighty men of David. Now when the Lord put those words in the Bible, the mighty men of David, he didn't do that accidentally in unsubmission. He did it for an absolute reason, pointing out these men that have been the mighty men of David and are great examples for the Christian if they'll add them to their life. The mighty man. The mighty men of David. All right. And and now he gives them, number one, what is this first mighty man of David? It says in the passage, it says, The Tishmamite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. And it says that about him. It said he was a Tishmamite. That, you know what that is? That's a, a Naaman, the fellow, as a particular office that he had in the army of the king of David. And it said he sat in what? The seat. The seat. He sat a special place in the seat. So he was a special officer in the army of David. And then he says, he says this about him. Chief among the captains. Then he, he was over the captains of the armies of Israel. And what does he say about him? He says this. The same was, uh, gives his name, Adino. Adino. How, how do you pronounce it? Adino? A Dino or a Dino, or something like that. It's a Dino or a Dino. I'm just going to say it's a Dino. <laughs> the Ezite, he lifted up his spear against 800, whom he slew at one time. Now here's a fella that is in the army of David, and it says he's fighting with a spear. Brother Mitchell, you know something about fighting. He's fighting with a spear. He don't have a machine gun. He don't have a M16. He don't have a cannon. He's got a one-on-one -on -one fight with a spear. And it says he slew 800 men at one time with a spear. 800 men at one time? I mean, at, no, at one time? In one battle. So here comes a battle up, and the battle's coming. And that battle's roaring down through there, and he takes that spear. I, I mean, who, who's doing this counting? Is some guy over there counting? He's got his little book over there and saying, Well, let me see, let me keep track of here. We're going to have a quite a battle coming up here. That ain't it. Nobody's keeping track. You know what happened? The Lord's up in heaven, and he's looking down, and he says to one of the angels, He said, Fella, this fellow over here, a dino, he is good with that spear. And I want you to watch something. I'm going to put him in my book. And he's quite a... There's a battle coming. I mean, there's quite a fight here. And I want you guys to keep track. Now watch this. It start, get set. Now keep track of them, boys. And one of those angels comes over there. And he's up there. And he's watching. And he keeps track. And he got a number down. And that a dino takes that spear. And one. Two. Three. He's down there keeping track. And Lord said that. And the Lord said, How many is that? He said, That's uh that's twenty, Lord. And that guy goes, Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, a hundred, one hundred. I mean at one time. And goes one hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred. Man alive. You know something? You say eight hundred times, you say that's a battle. That guy didn't kill him. He killed him one at a time with a spear. One here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. You say, you say, what's that? He said, that's the mighty men of David. The mighty men of David. Now write it down. If you're going to be a mighty man for God, it's what does it take to make you stop? Write it down. What does it take to make you stop. Now let it sink in, man. Here's a mighty man. Don't you think he got tired after killing about 200 of them? And just killing about 200 of those fellows and just killing them? Don't you think he said, Man, I'm tired. I'm tired. I want to quit. 
I follow. says, no way. I ain't quitting. I ain't quitting until this battle's over. And he kept right on going and right on going, right on going. Don't you quit till the Lord blows the trumpet. Brother, you, there may be a lot of battles around here. But he got tired. You may get tired. You may have folks lamb blasting you. You know, they'll give, give it to you if you belong to an independent Bible-believing Baptist church. I mean, the devil will give it to you. The devil will give it to you. If you quit, we won't have a church. You know that? If everybody quit, we wouldn't have a church. This church ain't made on me. You think I can preach to empty pews? Amen. I need people to preach to. I need somebody to preach to. You're as important to this church as anybody is important to this church. Don't you quit just because you, you, uh, you get up in there and you get going. That fellow just kept killing them and kill them and kill them and kill them. You want to make some man? What does it take to make you quit? I mean, the preacher yelling at you and screaming at you. Something coming up crossways in your life that gets things going. Do you quit? Don't quit! Keep on going! Be like a, a dino! Just battle after battle after battle after battle after battle. Man after man after man. Keep right going. 800 of a man. That'll make you a man. That fellow just kept on going right to the end of it till the thing was over, till it was all over. Lord says, 800 at one time with a spear. The mighty man of David. That's what you want to be. Want to be like a man. That's what you do. That man's classified. You know when God put that man down in his book and called it the mighty man of David, you know what he, you, he wanted you and I to do? He wanted you and I to come down through there and read that and say it 800 men at one time with a spear. Ain't that something? Ain't he a warrior? And then the Lord says, you're a good soldier, Jesus Christ. Don't you quit either. Don't you quit either. You keep on going. If the test of a man's character is what does it take to make him stop. And, and it's going to come across your path. They're going to call you name. You know what they call them around here? You know what they call them around here? They call them Bemisites. Down there they call them Rukmanites. They call them Bemisites. Why? Because they believe this book. Believe this book right here. King James only, folks. Call them Bemisites. Isn't that something? Weird, weird. You know, some you say that's going to gonna happen. They're going to call you a lot worse than that before this thing's over, brother. Amen. This thing's going to—it's going to make the difference. Why? You know, some you ought to be a good soldier, of Jesus Christ, and be like him. He killed them one at a time. I want to remind you, he killed them one at a time. Just one at a time. Just one day at a time. Just one step at a time. When the devil comes across your path and tries to discourage you and defeat you in more ways than one and the thing doesn't turn out like you want it to turn out, you say, Lord, I'm not going to quit. Amen? Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on fighting the good fight till the thing's over. All right. Again, I want you to look at another mighty man. I want you to look at another mighty man. Look at the next verse. And the next verse says... And after him was Eleazar. Eleazar, the son of Dodo. I mean, what a name. <laughs> I mean, who knows who Eleazar, the son of Dodo, is? You know who it is? It's the mighty man of David. That's who it is. God said, this fellow has got something, and he's a soldier, and I'm going to give his name in the book, and it's going to be in my book forever and ever. And I want you to pay attention to him because when you play the man, I want you to be like that man. Play the man like him. Now let's see something about him. Uh, Eleazar of the son of Dodo, the Hoata, one of the three mighty men. He's classified with one of the three mighty men of David, whom they defied the Philistines that were there to get, uh, gathered together to battle. All right, so the Philistines gathered together to a battle to take place. Now watch it. And the men of Israel were gone away. So here's Eleazar up there to battle. And the Philistines gathered together to battle. And there's Eleazar ready to go. And what does it say happened? The men of Israel did what? Gone away. They all left. And there is Eleazar there by himself. And everybody retreats. 
Everybody retreats. And he's up on the front line. Everybody's gone. And Eleazar's there by himself. And he looks around and he's just all by himself. He said, well, it's just me. Where'd everybody go? You follow it? Now, he arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the sword and the Lord wrought a great victory that day. It said he's up there and everybody retreats away from him and he's all there all alone by himself and nobody's with him. He's just him. And what did he do? It took that sword and it took that sword. Now what's the sword of the Christian soldier? Is that book right there? That's your sword. You're a soldier. You're a soldier. And that's your sword. And you're going to go all alone by yourself. Nobody with you. All by yourself. And you're going to fight by yourself and nobody with you. You're going to keep on fighting? By yourself? Nobody there but you? You're going to fight just by yourself and nobody there but you? All alone? Nobody around? Nobody there just you? Eleazar by himself? Now write it down. Get a hold of that book till it gets a hold of you. Get a hold of that book till it gets a hold of you. City, it said in the passage, and he arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory. Get a hold of that book till it gets a hold of you. What did he do? Grab the hold of that sword. And he's out there, and he's all alone, and he's going slice and slice and slice and slice and slice and slice. And he's dead tired, and he can't go no more. And he said, I can't go no more. And he, he got a hold of that sword like that, and got a hold of that sword like that. And he's fighting until the battle's over, and when the battle's over, he has his hand on that sword like that. And he says, brother, the battle's over, but I can't let go of the sword. And I call and I pry that finger away from the sword and I pry that finger away from the sword and I pry that finger away from the sword and I pry that finger. He couldn't let go of the sword because that hand was on that sword. Put your hand on the sword and fight all alone. And God will wrought a great victory with you. God did not put Eleazar in there for no reason at all. He said, it's the mighty man of David. And you said, preacher, i got to go all alone. Yes, all alone. By yourself. Nobody around, brother. Nobody just, you say, but preacher, am I all alone? The Lord's with you. Said so the Lord will write a mighty, mighty victory. But he was still there. He was still there. By, so they all fled. And there'll be times, brother, when you when they will all flee. When there will be just you. Nobody else. Nobody. Just you. By yourself. You gotta win the fight. Grab a hold and get in a book. Memorize the book. And say, Lord, give me a verse, give me a verse, give me a verse, give me a verse. And then put it out and put it out and put it out and put it out. But if you don't take that sword make it part of you and put that book out, you won't be able to stand and the Lord won't get a victory. Again, take your Bible, turn to 2 Samuel. I want to point out another man to you. Turn to 2 Samuel chapter 23 and I want to point out the next fellow. Here he is again. 2 Samuel chapter 23 and uh, look at the rest of the verse. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day and the people were turned after him only to spoil. Now what's that? That's the rest of Eleazar. That's the rest of Eleazar. He wins the battle with the sword. And then everybody else comes back for the spoil. <laughs> Ain't that like human nature? Oh, preacher, I mean, it went good. Now let's get in and we get to enjoy all the pleasures. And coming back there only to the spoil. They come back and rob the diamonds off the fingers and, and got, got the gold out of the teeth and got all the spoil. Amen. Returned only for the spoil. But they sure wasn't there to fight the fight. Amen. You know what you want to be? Be there fighting the fight all alone by yourself. 
Thank God somebody goes to the street corner with me and preach. I appreciate you going up the street corner and preaching with me. I appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Amen. I used to stand out there on that street corner year after year after year. And look at verse 11. And after him was Shunammon, the son of Ega the Huat. And the Philistines were gathered together unto a troop. And there was a piece of ground full of lentils. I got some beans there. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it. And slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory, oh, victory, a great victory. Now what's that guy? There's a guy out there, Shunammon. And what is he doing? He's out there in the field of beans. A field of beans. And he's out there in the middle of the field, and in come the Philistines and everybody runs. He's all by himself. And what does he say? You know what happened? Why did it mention in the passage, it said it was a field of what? Lentils. Why did it mention that? Because lentils is what? Is food. That's food. What are those guys coming in the field for? They're coming in there to take the food. To take the food. One guy says, they can't have the food. And I'm going to save the food and I'm going to die to save the food if it takes that. And he saves the field of food. They can't have the food. And they're trying to steal your food from you. And your food is this book right here. And I'm going to stay in the field. I'm going to stand up for that book. That authorized King James Bible is the Word of God and it's your food. And that fellow is willing to stand up and keep the food. It's littles. You know what's wrong? The Christian soldiers, they don't care about the food anymore. So what... I've had people say, well, King James Bible, so what? They're all the same. They're all good. They're all... No, they ain't. They ain't all good. The rest of them are garbage and filth and trash and they destroy your soul. You want, a, you want a Christian? You want to save the food? Be like that fellow there. You know what he did? He went out and stood in the field of lentils out there. Said, just a uh, some lentils, Lord. But man, it was food that folks eat. You're going to stand up for the book? You're going to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ and stand up for that book and write King James Bible only on the end of your st bumper sticker? Okay, King James only? You say, ah, oh, preacher, it's not that important. Get to the day of judgment and find out how important this book was over every other Bible that's written in America that's in this town. You know what I do? I went up to the Christian bookstore and I go through there and I look up and they got a shelf of King James Bibles here. And I got a shelf of RSV here and another shelf of another one down here. And I look through here and I look for good print. And I say, what's a real good print? You can't find it in this one, but you can sure find it on the second shelf. You ever notice that? You ever notice that this print up here is always not very good? It's always either small or it's, it's blotted out or it has something wrong with it. It's not near as good as this down here. Have you ever noticed how the paper up here is real cheap and the paper down here is real good and real expensive? Have you ever noticed how you say, boy, I sure like that Bible. Oh, I like that one. Then it's a New American Standard. And you say, oh, New American Standard. Oh, I, was just, I was just thought that was a King James. Stick it back in. You ever notice that? That's not done by accident. That's done on purpose. To steal your food. Steal your food. You say, Preacher, I'm going to feed you this book. You didn't come here to hear me. You didn't come here to get something about me. You come here to get something about this book. You walk out that door tonight, you didn't get Nathan Bemis. You come to get this book. Did you not? Then you go out that door and you say, the book says, the book says, the book says, the book says, the book says. And it'll feed your soul. You can go out there and you can be stronger. You can be a man. And grow. If you had to go out of the door and say, Bemis says, wouldn't you be in a sad shape? <laughs> and some folks say, who's that? They don't know me. Amen? But you can say, the book says. I it again. I want you to look at it again. Not only here is L.A.'s are, but I want you to look at the next one. Look at uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23, and I want you to notice the, it says, uh, Mighty man of David, 
mighty men of David. Notice in verse 13 he says, And the three of the thirty chief went down. Now three, what is that? That's uh, a Diano, uh, he's one, and Diano the son of Dodo, and Eleazar, he's the second one, and Shunema. That's all three of those guys together. So all three of those guys get together and the Lord says, Now I want to point out something about the mighty men. I want to point out something about the mighty men. And he picks those three guys right there, three of the mighty. And he says, These three fellows did something. I want to show you what they did. And he records it in his book. Come to David in the harvest time. The harvest time. When's the harvest time? The harvest time's the hardest t- the hottest time in the summer. I mean, when the sun's just out there, just a screaming down on it. And what do those fellows do? They come to David then. All right? In the cave of Adullam. Now, you know where the cave of Adullam is? The cave of Adullam is down there where David is running from King Saul. And he's a fugitive running for his life down there in the cave of Adullam. And the three mighty men say, David's our man. David's the man, let's go there. And say, go to David in the harvest time, the hottest time of the year, down to a cave. Did they go to him when David was the king of Israel? When the glory and praise was around? And everybody shouting hallelujah? Or did they go to him when he was down there in the cave, down there discouraged, running like a fugitive from, from, the, from the law? They went to David when he was down there hiding in a cave like a thief. That's when they went to him. These fellows says, that's the man to be following. He's the one. It may not be a great big old church. It may not be a great church. It may not be any fantastic thing. But he's the right man to follow. Let's go! And the three mighty men knew where to go. Went down there and followed him. Now I want to show you what they did. All right. And... Uh, and the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Ripham. And David was there in the hold. And the garrison of the Philistines was in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, All oh, that one would give me drink of the waters of the well of Bethlehem, which are by the gate. Which is by the gate. You know what David is? One day David's down there in the hold, down there in the cave. And he's walking around. It's hot summertime. And David is thirsty as he can be. David was born in Bethlehem. And he just gets to some thinking about, boy, I remember when I used to drink out of the well of Bethlehem. Oh, those sweet waters of Bethlehem. And he's just kind of daydreaming. And he says that. And uh, those three men, the mighty men, Eleazar and Adeno and Shema, hear him. They hear David say that. David did not say, go get me some water, that's a command. David didn't say that. David was just kind of wishing to have something. And those men say, what can we do? Hey, you know what he wants. He'd like a little water out of the well up there at Bethlehem. And those three mighty men say, yeah, but the army of the Philistines is there. And so what do those men do? They say, we'll die to get him a drink of water. Die to get that fella David a drink of water. You know what those fellows were? Those fellows just wanted to please David. Just wanted to just have a, just wanted to say, well, thanks, fellas. They wasn't going under the commandment of David. They wasn't going in any direct command where they had to take. They took their life in jeopardy for him just to please him and make him happy. And they broke through and went in there and got a a skin of water. This ought to to do him. I mean, do you know what they did? Those fellows must have fought to get in and fought to get out. And took their life in jeopardy. Said they took their life in jeopardy. You know what that is? I'll tell you what that is. That's this right here. Take your Bible and turn to Acts chapter 15. Now turn to Acts chapter 15. And look at verse 26. Now here's the passage. Turn to Acts chapter 15 and look at verse 26. Turn to Acts chapter 15 and look at verse 26. And what does it say? It says, Acts chapter 15 verse 26 says, 
men that have hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hazarded their lives. Underline it. Hazarded their lives. You say, what's that? That's a guy getting into the place where he could almost die for doing something for the Lord. Amen? Now come on, folks. Wasn't that those fellows right there that said they've gotten to the place where they could almost die doing something for the Lord? And what have you done for them? You ever hazarded your life for the Lord? <laughs> I mean, you ask a guy to come to church on Wednesday night and he says, well, I don't know. Come on, folks. You ask a fellow to give some more money and he says, well, I don't know. But I think I give a little bit too much already. Hazarded lives for them. You know something? You're going to have to stand alongside Eleazar and say, I loved a man and followed him enough to just hazard my life to just go get a little water for him because he was my captain. What have you ever done for your captain, the Lord Jesus Christ? Is Jesus Christ your captain? Is he your captain? Then you ought to hazard your life for him. You ought to give up something for him. You ought to do something for him. Ought to cost you something. You know what Christians are? They're, they're a bunch of chickens. They don't want to tell anybody about Jesus. They're afraid somebody's going to mock them, make fun of them. I don't want to stand up and be calm. Somebody might laugh at me. Oh, if I witness on the job, preacher, I might lose my job. There you go. Oh, preacher, if I say anything about Jesus on the job, I'll get fired. There you go. Those fellows hazard their life for it. Christians lay down their life for Jesus Christ. Some of them said addicted themselves into the ministry of the saints. And what have we done? What have we done, brother? What have we done? How much have we really done for the Lord? I don't think it's a lot like them. We have a hard time comparing ourselves with them, wouldn't we? That's a, that's a man. He's a man! That's what the fellow was. God said, these are the mighty men of David. You don't think they become mighty men by standing back and let somebody else do it. They become mighty men because they're willing to get in there and say, well, let's go and let's just get him a drink of water. Them, them fellas must have been tough, boy. Boy! They wouldn't quit. What did David do when he brought the thing? Look at 2 Samuel chapter 22 and look at verse 15. And David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink of the waters of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. And the three mighty men break through in the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that there was by the gate, and took it, and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that thou should do this. Is it not the blood of the men that were in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. Thus did this thing three mighty men. You know what David did? When they brought him that, that water, and David looked at that water and David had the wisdom to look at the water and say, those men risked their life and put their life on the line for a drink of water and their blood was at stake for a drink of water for who? For me. And David says, Lord, it's too good. It's yours. It's yours! And he give it to God. Why? Because it means blood is at stake. See that thing? Lord said, Woe be to me that I should take it. Lord, it's too much for and too good for me. Lord, it's yours to give it to God. A mighty man will give something to God. What if you give him? What if you give him? Oh, preacher, I give him my tithe. Okay. What else you give him? I mean, you really give some? These guys give their blood. And David gave them that thing and said, Lord, there it is. You know something? I calculate, if I just calculate everything that I give to the Lord, you know some I'm going to come up awful short. Now, I'm not talking about what you give to your, your mama or what you give to your dad or what you give to your sons. I'm not talking about that. 
I'm not talking about what you give to your wife. I'm, what, I'm talking about what you give just for Jesus. Just for Him. Come on. With me? Give just for Him. A mighty man would do that. Alright. Last of all, I want to show you one more. Look at verse 17. Verse 17 said, And he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that are at jeopardy of their lives? Therefore I would not drink it. Therefore did thus three mighty men. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zariah, was chief among the three. And he lifted up his sword against three hundred and slay them, and had some among the three. Now who is this? Abishai. You know who Abishai is? Abishai is the brother of Joab. He's the brother of Joab. How many he killed? He killed 300. Did he kill 800? Come on. Did he say it killed them all at one time? It said, said uh, Ad Adonai, Ad that a fellow, he killed all 800 at one time. Didn't say Abishai killed them all at one time. Just said he killed 300. You know what that shows me? That shows me a mighty man may not be classified with somebody else how mighty they are, but thank God he killed 300. I may never be a ruckman, and I no doubt never will be, but I've got a few. I've got a few. Now how about you? You may not be a missionary, you may not be a preacher, and you may never be an evangelist, and you may never be a great soul winner, but thank God you got a few. Get you 300 anyway! Maybe you'll not be a hundredfold Christian. Maybe you won't be a sixtyfold Christian. But be a thirtyfold Christian. Don't bomb out. Don't bomb out. A lot of folks bomb out. A lot of them do. Don't bomb out. Thank God he got three hundred. Well, you know, sir, something in the passage it said, Abiashah. You know who that is? That's Joab's brother. Now how come it didn't say Joab was a mighty man? Joab is a greater man than all of them. Why didn't it say Joab? You know why it didn't say Joab? Because Joab goes down as a murderer. He kills a man in the gates of the city of refuge. And the city of refuge is a safe place for any man. And Joab kills him in the city of refuge. So he's classified with a murderer. He doesn't go down with the mighty man. You say, how does that classify you? I'll tell you, it classifies some Christians. Some Christians bomb out. Some Christians bomb out. Joab bombed out. Killed a man. Bombed out, you see, is a great man, but he bombed out. Why? Because he didn't finish. God wants you to finish. Go away then. Don't you quit no matter what. Don't you quit because of me? Don't you quit because of somebody else? Don't you quit! Go all the way to the end. One more fella. Said the mighty men of David. I want you to look in the last chapter, I mean the last verse. I want you to look at the last name in verse 39. It says Uriah the Hittite. I want you to look at it in verse 39. Uriah the Hittite. You know who Uriah the Hittite is? Uriah the Hittite is said to be the mighty man of David. But you know who Uriah the Hittite is? Uriah the Hittite was the husband of Bathsheba. And you know what happened to Uriah the Hittite? Uriah the Hittite died in battle up on the hottest place of the wall by the commandment of David to destroy his life. Uriah the Hittite was a mighty man of David. And yet what did David do? David had him killed. David had the man killed. You say, well preacher, when God said to mighty man of David, David was not the one that was writing it. The Lord was. The Lord was saying, David, one of your mighty men was Uriah the Hittite. But David, did, I bet David didn't look at it that way. I bet David looked at it like, I don't know about that fella. No, I think that fella's just a... Come on. Don't you know human nature? 
Don't you know human nature? I bet David would go around and say, All right, hit it tight, ought to die it anyway. I bet you dime and a dollar David felt that way about it. That's the way human nature is. We always want to justify their sin. Always want to, I'm right! You know what God said? God said, The mighty men of David, Uriah the Hittite. You might leave this church and head off to Timbuktu. And if you're faithful with God and does what God tells you to do and serving God and loving God and going away there, I might think you're nothing but a bum. But so what? My opinion ain't worth a hill of beans anyway. Amen! If you're a mighty man in the eyes of God, you're a mighty man in the eyes of God. And if you're not, you're not. It doesn't make any difference what man thinks of you. Even a man like David. Every eye closed and every head bowed. And Christians praying. Now Christian, you're a mighty man in God's sight. Or you ought to be a mighty man in God's sight. Don't you, don't you mess the thing up. Don't you, don't you say, I, I, I don't like that David. That fella, I tell you, he, I, I don't agree with that thing. With a ride of hit tight, I mean... And Bathsheba, we ought to just leave David and drop him. Don't you be like that. You be busy doing what God wants you to do, and you be a mighty man. You know when Uriah Tittite quit? He didn't quit. He got killed in the battle doing what God wanted him to do. Uriah the Hittite was a mighty man. Right down to the end, dying what God told him to do. Fighting a good fight. Now you be like that. You be like that. Now if I get mad at you, so what? So what? You be a good soldier. And I ain't nothing anyway. Come on. Come on, Christian. I, uh, by the grace of God, I won't ever get, get crossways with you. By the grace of God, I won't get messed up. But you know, I'm just a man. I'm a sinner like anybody else. I ain't get anything. Or, I ain't no... Holy Spirit, I ain't just, I'm a sinner, man. I'm a sinner. Now, Christian, you be fighting the fight. You get in there and don't you quit. Don't let nothing stop you. And you be faithful and, you, and serve God and be busy doing what God wants you to do. Stand up for the book and go around if you got to. A mighty man will walk alone. He'll be faithful and he won't let the small things stop him. And he's got endurance, endurance, endurance. He'll keep on going. The test of a man's character was it makes him stop, make him quit. Now be faithful. Be faithful. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray you speak to every heart here tonight. Lord, you know we're nothing but men. Every one of us, Father, we're all flesh and blood. Lord, we're all sinners. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be good soldiers. Lord, help us to fight the good fight. And Lord, as, as the discouragement comes in here and the discouragement comes in there and, and our hopes of life uh, go down the tube and we wish things to happen and they don't happen, Father, help us not to look down here, but Lord, help us to look up there. And Lord, help us to keep our eyes up in heaven and trust in that one of these days there'll be a day of glory and one of these days there'll be a payday. And Lord, help us to be faithful, loving you and loving your book, Father. Bless your people tonight. Encourage them, help them to go away from here saying, I'm going to be a better soldier for you. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and for His sake. With every eye closed and every head bowed, Christians praying tonight. Now Christian, it's a must, it's a must, that when sin gets the victory, you don't quit. And when you fall down, you get up. And you fall down, you get up. And you fall down, and you get up. You fall down, you get up. You say, but preacher, I fell many times. Get up! Get up! Get up! Don't stay down. Don't stay down. Get up and go again. The righteous man, oh, he falls seven times, will rise again. You get up and go again for the Lord. You be faithful. You be dependable. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in that which is much. Don't you let something get a hold of you 
and get mad like Joab did. He got mad and he wanted to take revenge. And that revenge destroyed Joab being classified with one of the mighty men of David. It, it, it messed Joab up. Don't, don't you get some bitterness in you, something in you that gets you and, and destroys you. You forget about it and go on and let God take care of it. Let God take care of it. He can take care of it. Now let Him take care of it. He will. Turn it over to the Lord and say, Okay, Lord, there it is. It's yours. You take care of it. Oh, if Joab had just done that. If you say, Okay, Lord, I, He killed my brother, but I'll let you take care of it. God would have taken care of it. Now you can too. Maybe it's personal. Maybe a lot of things come across your, your grain that cuts you to heart. And you say, oh, I, oh, preacher, it's so hard. You let God do it. Let God do it, Christian. Let Him do it. He can take care of it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Leave it up to the Lord. He'll take care of it. He can handle me. He can handle anything that comes. Anything, brother. He can handle it. Let Him take care of it. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray right now. That you'd help your people, strengthen them, Father, and make them strong like men. Lord, help us to play the man for you and be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Let's all stand. Take your hymnal tonight and turn the page. How to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and serve him and his presence daily live. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to his I bow. Every eye closed and every head bowed as we close the service tonight. Now, Christian, you're going to have to fight a lot of battles all by yourself. You're going to have to fight them all alone. Some of them just going to be just you fighting them. Now, I'm telling you the truth. Some battles you're going to get in, you're going to have to fight them all alone. And there won't be any man on this earth that can ever fight them with you. They're, they're not able. They're not able. And But that man stood in, by himself and got a hold of the book, and the book got a hold of him. And he stood, and there was a great victory for the Lord. The Lord wrought a great victory. The Lord wrought a great victory. You stand and stand for the book, and God will do a great victory through you. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray tonight that you bless your people, encourage them, Father, strengthen them, and Lord, help them. And as they go out of this building tonight, Lord, help them as they go out and they have to go home and they have to go through temptations and trials and troubles. And, and Lord, the heartaches, things that will break their hearts, Father. Lord, help them to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ, faithfully for you until the trumpet sounds. In Jesus' precious name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed.